Hello again, friends. Today we're working on the activity called appending to an array. I wanted to quickly review some of the procedures that, can, that we can do on arrays because some of them will be useful in this activity uh, that we're doing today. So uh, remember last time we uh, did this little example where we said we have an array of characters and there are one, two, three, four, five, six characters. They'll have indices 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 in this array. And we talked about there are some behaviors that are all arrays have that are very useful. And one of them is if we go ahead and say, uh, what if we want to remove an element from an array? Well, we can say the array name characters dot remove at some index. So if we do that, we're going to say we want to remove the character or the element at the array's characters index 3. And right now, Lando is in there. So what happens if we execute that statement is Lando gets removed and Kenobi and Ray move over to fill the gap and their indices will change to be 3 and 4. Okay, so now we no longer have six elements in the array. We have only these five elements in the array. All right, another thing you can do, and we'll work on this a little bit today in today's activity, is you can say the array name dot append some new element. And since each element in this array is a string, we need to append another string. You can only append elements of the same type that your array currently has. So this is an array of strings, so we can append a new string and append um, at, attaches a new element to the end of the array. It always puts it at the end here. So we're going to get a new array element, element at index 5, and it will have the value Luke. So Luke comes in here, and that's what a pen does. Okay? Always adds a new element to the end of the array. Alright, one other thing we can do here we don't want to add something to the very end of the array always. Sometimes we might want to put something at the beginning of the array or in the middle of the array somewhere. We can use the array.insert insert method or behavior. And again, we have to insert an element of the same type. And in this case, these are strings. So we're going to add an element or insert an element called Vader at index 2. And again, there's already an element at index 2, Leia, so we need to make room for Vader to be number 2. So we're going to split this array into two parts, move Leia, Kenobi, Rey, and Luke over here. Now we can add a new element at index 2, Vader, and we can then change the indices for Leia to be 3 instead of 2, and Kenobi, Rey, and Luke also get bumped up by 1. Okay. So we've talked about remove, the dot remove, we've talked about the dot append, and we've talked about the dot insert. So those are all really useful um, commands or useful uh, behaviors that arrays have that you can use to modify arrays. All right, let's go to the puzzle now. Okay, we're in the puzzle appending to an array, and it says here the goal is to append to an empty array based on coordinate properties. Okay, and then it says adding each item to an array individually is really repetitive. What if we could create a set of rules for the coordinates to include in your array? So what's happening here? Well, it says first start with all coordinates, an array of all the coordinates in the puzzle world. So that's this first line of code right here that says let all coordinates equal World dot all possible coordinates. So, um, well, we can just sort of assume that this is an array because they tell us here it's an array of all the coordinates. But I like to kind of check things out first and see what's happening here. So I'm going to comment out all this here. I'm just going to select it and hit Command Slash, and that will add comments uh, over all of our code in here. So we're starting with uh, blank code basically. And I want to look at what's actually in all coordinates. So I'm going to make a little for loop here that says for a coordinate in all coordinates. So this is that really cool for loop that uh, loops over every element. Uh, this would be all coordinates. This is that really cool for loop that loops over every element uh, of an array. Okay, 
really uh, convenient way to do it rather than having to keep track of the indices of everything. So uh, what happens here is that uh, the first time through the loop a coordinate will be set to the first element in all coordinates. Second time through the loop a coordinate will be set to the second element in all coordinates and so on. So uh, the way we can see what's actually in each of these coordinates is let's go ahead and do something to it. So let's place an item at each one of the coordinates that's in all coordinates. So uh, I know from working with this in uh, past puzzles you can say world dot place an item at a coordinate okay we'll choose this one down here and maybe let's just make uh, well we like gems so let's go ahead and place a gem a new instance of gem at each coordinate and each coordinate again is going to be referenced by this variable a coordinate in here so I'm just gonna say let's place a gem at a coordinate Okay, so this should loop through every coordinate, every element in this array, all coordinates. I don't know what they are, uh, but it says in here it's all the coordinates, so hopefully we'll get a gem at all the coordinates. And each time through the loop, a coordinate will be a reference to that, and we're going to place a gem at a coordinate uh, every time uh, through the loop. Okay, so we'll go ahead and run this, and in fact, let's um, maybe run it faster here. And there it goes. It's placing a gem. It looks like it's trying to fill up every coordinate. So good. I now believe them that all coordinates uh, is actually an array that holds all the coordinates. Look at all those gems. They're great, don't they? Okay. Uh, so now that we're confident that all coordinates is an array of all the coordinates, let's get rid of this code. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to select this, hit Command Slash, and that will toggle off the comments. So you can hit it once to put them on, hit it again, and it uh, takes them off. So that's a nice way to uh, stop some code from running that you want to keep there uh, temporarily uh, and then return to it later. OK. Let's come up here again and read through the instructions. It says we're starting with all coordinates, which is an array of all the coordinates in the puzzle world. Next, you'll need an empty array to append your coordinates to, okay? And because you're declaring an array with no stored values, you'll need to specify the type of items it should hold, okay? So here, right, the second line says var block set is an array of coordinates, and I know it's an array of coordinates because it has these square brackets around the type coordinate. So that's how you would uh, say that the type of block set is an array of coordinates. If I had wanted to be an array of strings, I would use the type string and put square brackets around that, and that would be an array of strings. So block set, its type is an array of coordinates, so it can hold a collection of coordinates but right away we initialize it to be square bracket square bracket which means it's an empty array so that's how you tell uh, that I want this to be its type it's gonna hold coordinate values but right now it's empty okay um, and we could check this too like we did the last time if you wanted to we could say var uh, I'm sorry we could say for a coordinate in block set and then world dot place uh, gem at each one of the coordinates in block set, but we wouldn't get any because it's empty right now. Okay. All right, now what do we want to do with this empty array of coordinates here? Uh, so it says here we want to finally iterate over all coordinates. So we're going to have a for loop over all coordinates and check the column and row properties of each coordinate. If the column property of a coordinate is greater than 5 or its row property is less than 4, then we want to append it to our empty array. I'm assuming that empty array is block set that we want to add that to. Okay. Uh, then later it says place six blocks on each of the coordinate array. That's what's happening down here. I'm not going to do that yet, so I'm going to select these and comment this out for right now. Okay. And just work with this part here. So the instruction said, let's loop over all coordinates. And so here's a for loop. They've given this to us for some coordinate in all coordinates. We want to look at every coordinate and do something to it. 
And what we're going to do is sort of filter uh, for all the coordinates that have a certain property or a certain set of properties. Okay. Um, in this case, they say we want to only collect coordinates that have a uh, column property greater than 5 or a row property less than 4. We're going to collect those and put those in block set. And we're going to use the append function to do that. Okay. So to do that, we're going to look at every coordinate. And if that coordinate we're looking at, if its column is greater than 5, so I need to modify this. This shouldn't be 2. It should be if it's greater than 5, not and, but or. The instructions say or. So remember or. Let's change this to be or. Looks like that. Those two vertical bars is or or the coordinates row property is less than 4. We want that to be less than 4. Okay, so that's our criteria for whether a coordinate will get added to the block set. Okay, So if that's true and we enter into this if statement in here, then it says we want to take block set, which is our empty array of coordinates, block set, and we want to dot append. Okay, And down here we can do autocomplete and append some new element and the element has to be a coordinate because a block set is an array of coordinates and the coordinate we want to add to it is the one we're currently looking at that meets the criteria we're trying to uh, filter by. So let's go ahead and add the new coordinate uh, or add coordinate to this which is a new element here. So block set gets, uh, uh, gets a new element added to it which is coordinate. And this coordinate can only be added to it if its column is greater than 5 or its row is less than 4. Okay, so let's double check that this is working here. And let's just go ahead and do our own little test before we get too far along in here. And so we'll say um, for uh, a location in block set. Then let's place a gem in here. World dot place a gem, a new instance of gem at a location. Okay, so here we're going through all the coordinates and we're finding the ones that meet some criteria where the coordinates column is greater than five or its row is less than four. And then if it is, if it does meet that criteria, we're appending it to this array block set. And here, then I'm looking only at the elements in block set, and I'm going to place a gem at every one of those locations. Okay, and we haven't done anything with this yet. So let's go ahead and do a run faster again on this, and let's see what happens here. Um, hmm, this looks a little, oh no, that could be right. So what do we have got here? We want to say that every column has to be greater than 5 or the row is less than 4. Well, um, this might be a row is less than 4 because it's 0, 0. In fact, all these rows are less than 4 if we look up here. So this must be the row uh, parameter 4. So all these in here have a row less than 4 and all these here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 have columns greater than 6. So all these have columns greater than 6. So I think it worked. Um, it must be that row is the uh, sorry, column is the first number in this uh, in this set of numbers, in this index pair here, and row is the second number in here. Okay, so row goes 0, 1, 2, 3, and then 4, 5, 6 would be here. All right, cool. Uh, now, what did they want us to do at each one of these? I don't think they wanted us to put a gem in here. It says then place six blocks on each coordinate in the array. Six blocks on each coordinate in the array. Okay, uh, well here we're placing a gem, so how do we place six blocks in it? Well, we could do a for loop in here. We could do, we could say let's change this to be uh, not a gem, but let's change this to be a block. 
new instance of block there. But we don't want just one block in here. We want six placed at that location. So I need to wrap this right in here inside its own loop. So I'm going to give this a little tab here. And let's go ahead and put this in a loop that says four. Um, OK, well, we don't really need to keep track of the number. So I could say something like for i in the range uh, 1 up to how many blocks do we want? 6 up to 6 then I want to do this here let's take this line here and I'm going to cut it out of there and paste it in here okay so what we did is we took this instead of placing one block we put it in a loop that says for i in the range 1 to 6. Now, um, I think we've talked about this a long time ago, but in case you forgot, we're not ever using this variable i. Um, so if you ever have yourself where a situation where you don't really care that there's a value i keeping the, 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 the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, you can just replace that with uh, an underbar in Swift. So we don't have a variable that we're not using. This is saying, I don't care to keep track of this, but we still want to do a loop that goes from one through six. Okay, uh, so let's try that and we'll run faster here. So we hopefully will place six blocks at each one of those locations. I don't know if it's doing six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it is. Okay, good. So we'll let it finish up here and see if we. Uh, have solved the puzzle correctly or not. And just to remind you the things that we're um, uh, sort of experimenting with in this puzzle while we wait for this to finish up are the append command. And don't forget that there are other commands that might be useful as well, like remove an element and insert an element. Uh, but append just sticks it at the end, and that's enough for this case. Uh, and the other thing we're kind of experimenting with here is creating an empty array right here and then adding elements to it later. It's down in here, we just filter out, we take the ones that we care about from all coordinates and we append those into block set here. And it looked like it worked. Uh, we did uh, what we needed to do to solve this puzzle. Um, great, uh, good. I hope arrays are starting to feel a little comfortable for you. If not, uh, it, takes, it takes, most students have to see these things three or four times before they really feel solid with it. So feel free to go back and look through the old puzzles, watch the old videos. Um, you'll start being real comfortable with arrays very soon. All right, all right, thanks for watching everybody. Give us a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, see you next time.